Most people know about the midget submarines used by the Japanese Navy in the Battle of the Pacific during World War II against the American ships. But what about the European theater? There were many experiments and quite a few successful and less successful models of these interesting vehicles used by the Italian and German Navy and the British side too. So today we are gonna take a look at these, starting with the Italians. The first operational model the Italian Navy developed was the Siluro Alenta Corsa, slow running torpedo in English, SLC in short for the Italian name. The idea of a manned torpedo was proposed in 1935 by two naval engineers, and as the craft was based on a standard torpedo basically, with outside attachments and controls, by the end of the same year the prototype were successfully tested. The SLC was 22 feet long and featured a small 1.6 horsepower electric motor. It could carry two 300 pound warheads to a range of 15 miles with a speed of 2.3 knots, or it could reach a maximum speed of 4.5 knots, but that drained the batteries in just 4 nautical miles. It had simple controls, similar to an airplane, for easy operation. It wasn't a suicide craft, on the nose it carried two easily attachable or detachable warheads. One of these was enough to sink a merchant ship, or even a battleship with some luck. From its two-man crew, the first man was the pilot, the second diver operated the warheads after reaching the target. These vehicles proved to be quite effective. On 19th of December 1941, three of them managed to sneak into Alexandria Harbor and sink two British battleships, the Valiant and the Queen Elizabeth. They also damaged the tanker ship and the destroyer. On later raids, in December 1942, on Gibraltar Harbor, they managed to sink or damage nine Allied ships. These raids on Gibraltar were planned well in advance, as the SLCs operated from an Italian oil tanker, the Altera, which had a secret underwater hatch to release these crafts. The ship was originally scuttled by its crew in 1940. In 1942, an Italian special unit officer learned about the ship and conceived an idea to rebuild it as a secret mothership for these manned torpedoes. Italians disguised as civil workers took control of the tanker, and repairs started under the cover of raising the ship for selling it. The ship's cargo hold was secretly modified for assembly and maintenance of the SLCs, and a secret hatch was cut on the hull below the waterline. The torpedo parts and equipment were smuggled to Spain in pieces and assembled on the ship. The Allies never suspected the tanker's part in the attacks on their ships. Only after the surrender of Italy they found out the manned torpedoes operated from there. Italy also developed a more advanced version of their manned torpedo, which was a purpose-built craft with a higher payload, bigger range and speed. It was called Siluro San Bartolomeo, San Bartolomeo Torpedo, or SSB in short. This model operated in the same manner as its predecessor, but was more streamlined with an actual crew compartment in the craft. It carried two bigger 450 pound warheads. The cruising range was increased to 45 miles, three times of what the SLC was capable of. The operation of the SSB was very similar to the older models. The craft slowly approached its target, where the second diver got off it only took about 30 seconds to detach a warhead, then secured it under the ship's keel, set the timers, then got back on the craft and they drove away. This was of course done underwater, unlike in this demonstration. After this the SSB could attack another target with its second warhead before heading home. This large German torpedo never seen action in the war, as it arrived too late, but actually influenced many Cold War designs. Now let's take a small detour to look at a craft the British developed. After the successful Italian attack on Alexandria Harbor, the British were inspired to develop a similar vehicle. The official development of the craft named Chariot began on April 1942. The first model, the Chariot Mark I, closely followed the SLC's build. It was a conventional torpedo, modified with seats, controls and a detachable 600-pound warhead. This vehicle was about 22 feet long, it could reach a maximum speed of 3.5 knots and could dive to a maximum of 27 meters. Its batteries provided electricity for about 9 hours operation. Due to their limited range, the chariots had to be carried close to their target by a ship or a submarine. Their first attempted operation was in Norway, where they meant to attack the battleship Turpits in Operation Title. Two chariots were transported to Norway on the fishing ship Arthur. To avoid detection, the chariots were towed behind the ship submerged. They managed to get through the German patrols and inspections, but just when they got relatively close to the position of the turpits, a storm broke out. They couldn't stop the ship to avoid the suspicion of the Germans, but they slowed down as much as they could. The chariot crews finished dressing in their diving suits, and the first man got in the water 
only to find both chariots were cut loose in the rough sea. After this first attempt, other deployments of the chariots used submarines as motherships for their missions. They had some success later on, although not as much as the Italians. In January 1943, chariot crews managed to sink an Italian cruiser in Palermo harbor. In June 1944, they managed to sink another cruiser, the Bolzano. They were also used in other roles. In June 1943, during Operation Husky, chariots were launched from submarines to survey the beaches for potential landing zones for the Allied invasion. In 1944, the chariot Mark II replaced the Mark I, which was a bigger purpose-built craft. It had a length of more than 30 feet, and the crew compartment was inside the craft. The top speed was increased to 4.5 knots, and its batteries had enough charge to run for 5-6 hours at full speed, or 8 hours at 3 knots. It carried a 1200-pound warhead, twice the size of the Mark I's warhead. Their most successful mission was in October 1944, when two Mark II chariots managed to sink two ships in a Japanese-occupied harbor in Thailand. And now we get to the German manned torpedoes and midget submarines. This will be a longer topic, so settle in. Germany was kind of late to work on manned torpedoes and mini-submarines. It was 1944 when they started deploying them. The first craft the Germans designed was a modified G7 torpedo, but unlike the SLC or the Chariot, it had a small cockpit. It only had a one-man crew, and instead of a detachable warhead, it carried another torpedo attached to the bottom. The first version could not submerge, it was used as a surface craft. In operation, only the plexiglass dome was visible above the water. The second variant, the Marder, was more advanced, it featured dive tanks and a compressed air pump and thanks to those, it could actually dive to 100 feet. They had a range of 48 nautical miles at 4 knots. For quick deployment, they were carried on custom-made trailers. They entered service in March 1944. Their first mission took place in April, when 30 of them were launched against Allied ships at Enzio, Italy. This first mission was a complete failure. Almost half of them capsized immediately, and only 17 managed to even launch properly. They did no damage to the Allied ships, but some of them washed ashore, making the Allied forces aware of the new threat. There were also many occasions when these crafts turned themselves into suicide weapons, when the carried torpedo failed to release and carried the craft together with the pilot all the way to the target. Their main combat operations came after the Allied landings in Normandy. On 6th of July 1944, 24 of these crafts attacked the invasion fleet, and managed to sink two British minesweepers. Their second attack came on the 8th of July, when 21 of them attacked the Allied fleet again. They were spotted approaching the fleet and came under fire, but still managed to sink one additional minesweeper. The last known successful attack of this craft happened in November, when a trawler was sunk in Belgium by one of them. The Germans had many more experiments to surprise the Allies from underwater. They developed quite a few midget submarines during the second half of the war. The first of these was Mork, Salamander in English. This was a small one-man submarine, more like an upsized torpedo. They were built in 1944, featured all-electric drive with a range of 35 nautical miles at 5 knots. They carried two G7 torpedoes. They were slow and cumbersome, and not very successful. They were used to attack the Allied ships at the invasion of southern France, but they didn't manage to do any damage and lost them from the 12 crafts. Its successor, the Bieber, was a more advanced design. It had a combined petrol and electric drive, resulting in a longer range, about 100 nautical miles, and a higher maximum speed at 6.5 knots on the surface. It used the electric drive submerged, and used the petrol engine on the surface. They carried two torpedoes on the concavities of the body, which reduced the overall size of the craft in exchange for a somewhat weakened hull. The Bieber was faster and more agile than Mork, but it was somewhat hard to steer. On their first operation in August 1944, from the 22 craft launched, only 40 managed to leave the harbor, and only two actually reached the operational area. In December 1944, they were deployed against shipping traffic to Antwerp, but with little success. Bieber was actually only planned as a stopgap until the new Zeehound mini-submarine was ready in December 1944. The development of Zeehan started when Germany captured two British X-class midget submarines during Operation Source when they tried to mine the battleship Tirpitz. 
The Germans designed their own midget submarine after inspecting the British ones. The Hound had a displacement of about 17 tons, contrary to the 6.5 tons of Weber. It had a two-man crew, carried two G7 torpedoes at 7 knots with a 300 miles operating range. It featured a fixed periscope and a plexiglass dome, which could withstand depths to up 220 feet. From the two-man crew, the captain navigated the craft, searched for targets and aimed for attack, while the engineer sitting behind him handled all the controls. The production of Zehan started in summer 1944, and they first saw action in December the same year. 18 of these midget submarines set out from the Netherlands for a mission, but they hit a storm and only two of them returned. They claimed their first kill in February 1945, sinking a freighter. The Zeehans mainly operated on the English Channel and at the German coast. With their longer range and bigger size, they could stay at sea for several days if needed. Over time, they were accounted for sinking about 93,000 tons of shipping. Their last mission was to take supplies to the surrounded Dunkirk garrison on 2nd of May 1945. The Zeehans' small size and quiet running made it very hard to detect. Even with sonar it was hard to get a return from the small hull, and if they were running slow, they were almost undetectable for the hydrophones too. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.